So while Zachariah was in the holy place, an angel appeared to him, and what ensued was really quite a long conversation. And Luke tells us that, meanwhile, the crowds outside kept expecting him to come out. They were amazed over Zachariah's delay, wondering what could have happened to him inside the sanctuary. And when he finally did come out, he tried to talk, but he couldn't speak a word, and they realized from his gestures that he had seen a vision while in the holy place. Now, he remained mute as he finished his days of priestly ministry in the temple, and then he went back to his own home. And soon afterwards, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for the next five months. I find it so striking that both Zachariah and Elizabeth, in different ways, went through extended periods of silence or seclusion before their son was born. Zachariah's silence was obviously enforced. He couldn't speak even if he tried. What he must have been feeling in those early weeks after meeting the angel, I have no idea. At the very least, bewildered, I suspect. And then I wonder, what might he possibly have begun to have unfold in his heart as he witnessed the first signs of his wife's pregnancy? I mean, that must have been thrilling and terrifying and humbling and a thousand other things all rolled into one. And I wonder how long it took him to start appreciating his enforced silence, which surely must have given him much needed time to think and pray and study the scriptures and dwell on what the angel said. Who knows? But what we do know is that Elizabeth also had a time, perhaps not of total silence, but of withdrawing herself or concealing the growing child within her because she went into seclusion for the first five months of her pregnancy. Now, I'd always assumed that she did this because of a cultural custom, but apparently not. And we can only guess at why, scholars tell us. I mean, was it to protect them both from the mocking disbelief of others should they have announced her pregnancy early when Elizabeth might have known she was pregnant, but others might have accused her of making it up? Or was it to wait for God to announce this miracle, perhaps through Gabriel's prophetic declaration that Elizabeth was pregnant when he spoke to Mary? Or was it simply because she needed to rest because young or old, but especially when you're older, making a baby in those early months is tiring. Again, we just don't know. But what we do know is that Elizabeth didn't come out of seclusion until her pregnancy was too obvious to be beyond question. Not she, not Zachariah, not anyone could doubt the miracle of a child to a postmenopausal woman when they could see that enormous belly and feel that child kick. So where does that leave us? Well, it leaves me pondering on the gift of silence. And I realize that silence is a good thing. And perhaps I, perhaps we, should practice it more. I mean, can you imagine what Zachariah might have said had he been able to speak straight away? How others might have crushed his or Elizabeth's belief had that birth been announced straight away? You see, silence is such a rare commodity in our noisy social media digital world. Not only can it be frightening when we encounter it for ourselves, that deafening sound of silence, but we're also constantly given opportunity to add our voice to the cacophony. We're always ready to add our opinion into the fray, but it seems that God uses silence to teach profound things and to bring about his purposes. So I wonder if we can dare to make more room for silence in our lives. Lord, with a little fear and trembling, my prayer is that you would teach me, you would teach us about the gift of silence. Amen.